All right, moving right along. So if you're just tuning in for the first time and you were looking for more hip mobility, this is part of an at-home golf fitness assessment that we put together a few weeks ago. So if you want to check and see how mobile your hips are before you start this, go back and check that out on our blog at hansenfitnessforgolf.com. So in our assessment, we wanted to see how flexible or how mobile your hips are and how they move. So we have a five iron right here and then we have a six iron right here. So setting that against it, you're going to get about a six 60 degree angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the five iron, you're going to stand, we're going to start with the left side. So you're going to put your right toe right here, put the club, the five iron, right against your hip bone and keep it there. And then you're going to turn your lower body as far as you can go, trying to match the angle of that shaft that's on the ground. Make sure you keep it. I like this. I see a lot of people go like this. Oh, look how far I can move. But you got to make sure you keep it against your hip bone. And then we're going to Test the other side. So you're going to step right foot, turn, see how far you can go, try and get to 60 degrees. Then you're going to flip it around and do the other side. So what that's showing you is internal mobility, which is really important in the golf swing, and external mobility as well. So I'm going to give you three stretches for each external and internal that you can do right in the comfort of your own home. So we're going to start here on the ground, so we're going to start with the easiest first. And then you can see if I stepped in any dog poop on my morning walk this morning. But what you're going to do is you're going to sit down with your legs straight, and we're going to do what's called an ankle windshield wiper. So you're going to try and keep your butt cheeks on the ground, sit back. You're going to take both feet and go each direction. So what we're working on here is we're working on when your foot goes out, we're working on external rotation. And then when your foot goes in, we're working on internal rotation of the hip. So I'll explain why those are so important in the golf swing at the end of this video. But if you have really tight hips and you found it hard to even turn your hips in that assessment, this is where you want to start. I suggest everybody starts here and then just kind of progress along with me. But this is the first one. Just try to keep the glutes on the ground, legs straight and rotate back and forth as far as you can go. You should feel a good stretch in your hips. All right, so if you thought the ankle windshield wiper was difficult, just stick with that. Keep doing that. You can do it as much as you want. You can do it every day, and that's going to get you a little bit more mobility in your hips. But this is progression number two, and this is called hip drops. So what we're going to do is sit again, keeping your glutes on the floor. You're going to drop your knee in as far as you can. Now, I want to warn you that I have a lot of clients that will complain of a little bit of stress here on the inside of the knee, and if you have a lot of that, just skip this one. Go on to the next one or stop because this is one that tends to provide a little bit of discomfort on the inside of the knee if you have tightness. So what we're doing here is we're stretching that internal hip rotation. If you have tight hips, your glutes going to want to come off the floor. Just try and keep it down. Go in as far as you can go just like this. So we're going to do it about 15 to 20 times on each side and hold it for about three seconds. And that's really good. That's called a hip drops. Okay, so if the ankle windshield wipers and the hip drops were easy for you, this is the next one. So now we're going to you're going to take your right leg and make a 90 degree angle, take your left leg and make a 90 degree angle with your knees. Now, the, the hard part is you want to sit up tall. So, if you have tightness in your hips, you're probably going to be want to be back like this, but I want you to try and get up as high as you can keeping the foot that's going out, so in this case it's my left side, that's the internal hip rotation. This is the external rotation on the right leg. So I want to keep this glute on the ground and sit as tall as I can, just like this. So now you're going to feel, a, you should feel a big stretch in here. If you have really tightness, in, a lot of tightness in your hips, you might feel it up here. You can kind of go ahead and lean back to relieve that, but you want to feel, eventually you're going to feel it in here. A lot of times when you start to stretch something you've never stretched before, your body freaks out and it grabs and it tries to protect the joint from being injured. So you may not feel it in the right spot at first, but give it some time, let it relax and let it loosen up and then you'll start to feel it in the right areas. So we're stretching the internal rotation on the left. Now to stretch the external rotation on the right, you're going to lay over this leg. And you want to try and get as close to the foot as you can. And you can come down and try and get as close to that foot. You should feel a big stretch in the right glute. And then once you've done, so you, you do this one for about 10 to 15 seconds, 
the external rotation on the 10 to 15 seconds. And then repeat that about two or three times and then we're just gonna switch legs. So you're gonna go, you're gonna go external rotation on this side, internal rotation on this side. Again, trying to get that glute down on the ground and sitting up tall, just like that. So we're gonna keep that right glute stretching the internal and then laying over this side, stretching the external. That's one of my favorite stretches for the hips. All right, so I'm still in this position and you know how I love to work in progression. So progression one, ankle windshield wiper. Progression two, hip drops. Progression three, 90-90. Now we're gonna do what's called the active 90-90. So if you, you got the 90-90, you said this isn't so bad. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna sit tall and you're just gonna switch back and forth from that position. So try to keep your hands in the air if you can. If not, then you just wanna kinda put your fingertips down. The idea or the goal is to do it without your hands. And then you can just go back and forth with your hands behind you if you can. But if you couldn't, if you gotta use your hands, I recommend going back to the 90-90s and working on that first. As far as progressions goes, those are my favorite four progressions that are on the ground to stretch both the external and internal part of your hips. These next two exercises are standing and they're easy to do wherever you are, but I just want to make sure that you understand that the progressions at the bottom, the, the first four are, the last one is probably one of the most difficult ones. If you have tight hips, that's going to be hard for you. If you have good mobile hips, then it should be pretty easy for you to do. So. This next one is a standing, it's just a deep squat with your toes pointed out. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna stretch that internal rotation. So I suggest using a club or some type of um, sturdy object to hold on to. And then you're just gonna squat down. I, I want you to feel like you're pushing your knees out. Make sure your toes are pointed out. And we call this a sumo squat, as you can see why. So we're gonna just push the knees out, go down as far as you can. You'll feel a good stretch in the groin. So you wanna do about 10 of those. Hold it for two to three seconds while you're on the ground. That's an easy stretch for your internal hip rotation. Okay, so for my last hip stretch, and if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know I love this one because it's awesome because it'll stretch your hips, it'll mimic the golf swing. It's a little bit of everything involved. So you have stability, you have mobility, you have balance. So it's called the stork turn. So what you're gonna do is I suggest taking a club to start, putting it in the hand that is on the side of your foot that's in the air. So next you're gonna hook that foot behind your knee and you're gonna rotate that knee as far as you can around that leg. If you feel any pain in your, in your downward knee, just don't go as far. Try and keep your shoulders square and you're gonna rotate. Once you get good at that, you can try picking up the club, rotating it this way, standing tall. That's gonna work on your balance and stability. And then if you really feel like you're good, you can get into a golf posture and make that same move. So you wanna repeat that on both sides, 10 to 15 times at whatever your level is. And that's one of my favorite for the golf swing and internal hip rotation. Okay, so before I wrap it up, let's talk about why internal hip rotation is so important in the golf swing. So if you're a right-handed golfer and you take a backswing, your right leg is going through what's called internal hip rotation. Your femur in your bone is rotating inside that hip joint internally. So when you load on this right leg, if, you're, if you don't have good internal hip rotation, then what's gonna happen is your body can't do what it's supposed to do. So it's either gonna go this way, which we call the dreaded sway, or you're gonna go this way and lock your leg out and you're gonna get your weight too far towards the target and it's gonna cause a bunch of different swing faults. So internal hip rotation on the backswing, really important. On the downswing, probably even more important because when you come down, you want that, you hear people talk about post up on your left leg. If you don't have good internal rotation on that left side, you're not gonna be able to post up on it. It's gonna either slide this way or it's gonna push you backwards that way. So what you wanna make sure is that you can internally rotate and a good way to test that is if you can look at your knee, turn your hip and your knee stays pointed forward. If your knee tries to turn out this way, it's a good chance you gotta go back and do those exercises. So that's why internal hip rotation is so important in the golf swing. All right, so there you have it. Those, that's all I got. Those are my best hip stretches for your golf swing. Internal rotation, external rotation, it might sound complicated, but it's really not. It's one, one's going one way, one's going the other. Make sure your hips are mobile and it'll change your golf swing. That's part of our golf fitness assessment. So if you haven't done it, I suggest going back, check it out on the blog, do it, 
and then you can work through everything. But if you, if somebody asked me what's the most important aspect in your body to have good, I would say <clears throat> you need mobile hips and you need a tight, strong glute muscles. And that's all in that center area. That's what's propelling the golf club. That's what's keeping you stable and that's what's keeping you balanced and it's going to improve your consistency. So we'll see you back next week for our next assessment breakdown.